Hello, Catman Drew, field service tech, Caterpillar, 30 years. Not all those years were spent in a service truck. Uh, four of them, I think, were in the shop. Uh, two on day shift, two on night shift, something like that. Then I got into a field service truck and that, my career changed at that point. Um, this is a really screwed up story. Um, they sent me to a job in Central City, Philadelphia. Um, it was a, a very old, but very good condition, um, 245 excavator. The 245 excavators in their day were some big, that was big iron. I mean, that was like, wow, huge. This customer, oh, it was a dismantling company. I'm trying to remember the name of it. It sounds like they're from California, but they weren't. Anyway, um, they had this huge... 245 cat machine they painted it blue because that's what color their stuff was and they were adding a 70 a 50 foot extension stick some people call them the boom the boom is actually the part that lifts the stick um, on a on a case machine they call it a dipper like in the old school, you know, cranes that would go down and the dipper piece would come up and down. That's what Caterpillar calls that the stick. So I had to replace the stick with an extra long, I mean, this thing was like 50 feet long. When it's all said and done on the machine, it's 75 feet. That's how high it can reach up. And on the end of it, it was either a grapple or a hammer. And a gigantic counterweight to compensate for the, you know, this extra boom. So I go down there, and of course I'm promised, well, yeah, we're gonna have a man lift in here, and we're gonna have all this, and we wanna be safe. Okay, cool, you know, whatever. I start preparing this machine. And if I'm not mistaken, we did the weight first, the counterweight, which was not that big of a deal, actually. Um, you would think that would be the hardest part, but it really wasn't. Um, we got the counterweight on. Now I'm going to start putting on this uh, the stick. Well, I take the old one off first. Well, I worked. I was a. I am. Um, I'm a, a union mechanic, operating engineers union, 542 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. They sent a guy from the union hall to help me. So they provided me a helper that was union. I also had a helper from the cat dealer who, I hate to say this, I trust more because they do this every day and they know the equipment and they know me and I would take orders from any one of them and not think twice. But this guy who's nothing, I don't know the guy, he's never worked with me, I don't know what he's done in his past, but he was like a go-getter, let's work, let's work, let's work, which is okay, but I've learned over the years I'd rather take longer and work safe then hurry up and get hurt. Anyway, long story short. Oh, the man lift never comes. Oh, yeah, all these excuses. Okay, I have a ladder on my service truck, on my boom. And there are pictures of this machine I can provide if anybody's interested. I can show you everything. The whole, the stick, the kind of weight, everything. So anyway, I get my ladder off my truck. And I think we were in, I don't know if we were installing the stick or taking off the old one. But on a machine like that, you can only come down so far. Like, no matter how much you bend the, you know, the stick and the bucket in, the machine can't all, it won't come down as low as you need. So it was sitting kind of like up. You need a ladder to get to the pin on top where the pin, where the pin holds the stick and the boom together so they can pivot. So I, I set the ladder up there. I didn't even get a chance to, to connect it to anything. It was just sitting there. Nobody was on it. Nobody was going to use it until it was set up, you know, for safety. It was lunchtime. So well, we break for lunch. We all go. We sit down. We're eating our lunch. And uh, 1230 came by. And before anybody even moved to go back to the job, this guy, the helper guy, gets up and he walks away. We're like, oh, okay, whatever. We don't know what he's doing. Well, here he wants to sh prove that he's great and whatever. And what's he do? He goes up the ladder 
and starts trying to get the pin out. Now, I don't even know the guy's there yet. I, I'm not even, you know, it's still kind of lunchtime, but he decided to start early. Well, what happens is he fell off the ladder. I'm guessing the ladder was 12 feet high, maybe more. It was pretty high. It was an extension ladder, and remember, I had the extension part of it out. He fell. And when he did, he fell, I think, on his back. I'm not mistaken. It might have been, you know what, I think it was face down. Because when I got to him, we heard the thump. We heard a, ah! What happened? Well, go look, here's this guy laying on the ground, face down. And his head's turned to the side. I, I was first to the, to the guy, and I'm like, yo, are you okay? And all I kept saying is, tell my girlfriend I hurt myself. That's what he kept saying over and over again. I'm like, okay, okay, we'll tell her, we'll tell her. So we rolled him over, which probably was a bad idea, now that I have training and, you know, CPR and all that. Um, probably shouldn't have moved him, but my thoughts were, he can't breathe good laying on his down. I mean, there's no way the guy's going to be able to breathe. I don't know what, how much damage this man has suffered. So we rolled him over so he could breathe and talk. Of course, ambulance comes and takes him away. Ruptured spleen, uh, liver damage, I think some broken ribs, maybe a punctured lung. I don't know. He was pretty messed up. He was in bad shape. Um, of course, now I got the superintendent yelling at me for using a ladder. And I said, excuse me, sir, you, you told me you were going to provide me a land lift. It's not here. And at one point, they brought this weird, like, steps on wheels. They were junk. They were useless. And you couldn't go high enough anyway with the damn thing. So I turned it right around on the, on the guy. And I have no problem doing that. That's one thing about me and working at Cat in, in the field. You get to know how to handle customers. And there's no way I'm taking the heat for this. It was not my idea. It was not my... I didn't tell the guy to climb up the ladder. I didn't even have a chance to, to secure the ladder to the machine. I don't think the ladder fell. It may have. I think that's what happened. I heard the ladder hit the ground. That's right. I heard the... Boom! And when I heard that, I knew it was my ladder. I could tell by the sound. And, I, and then I heard the... Uh, and I'm like, oh, boy. So anyway, about four years go by... He didn't die. The guy survived, but he was messed up. I know that for a fact. Uh, much time had passed, and I think I was out with my knee or something. I was out injured, because I suffered many injuries working at Caterpillar. It's just nature of the beast, and that's why they call it heavy equipment. I remember my buddy, who I was just, who I worked with for years, Big heavy set guy. I shouldn't say heavy set. Big guy, Marine, ex Marine. They asked him to come get me from home, drive me to Center City, so I could do a deposition for this poor guy that fell off the ladder, which I did. And I just, you know, told him the truth. The guy was there. He seemed like he was in better shape. I mean, I don't know how bad he was inside. He seemed okay, but I don't know that. Um, so. I went and did my deposition. I guess there was uh, lawsuits involved. I don't know who they were trying to sue. I don't know if it was Caterpillar. I don't know if it was my dealership. I don't know if it was the customer. I don't know. They never told me that. But, you know, I hate to say this because the guy was a really nice guy. And he was a union member. He was one of my brothers. But we had no control over what he, what he did that day. We had no control. If you're in the position to work in that kind of a job and environment like that, you need to be trained in safety. You need to know how to handle that situation. You need to know what to do when you're working on a piece of equipment like that. And what he did was completely wrong, absolutely wrong. So I didn't say that part. I just told him what happened, you know, and this is what happened. Okay. And that was the end of that. But yeah, that was a messed up day. I did, huh. that day they shut the job down. And I went back to the shop. It was late in the afternoon anyway, it was after lunch. The next day, guess what? Beautiful man lift. Oh no, wait, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah, then they, then they provided me a man lift, which we used to assemble the machine. 
And the rest of the job went very well, actually. No problems, nobody got hurt, there was no broken tools, nothing. It just, it went great. So, just one of those stories where, relax, take your time, don't hurry. It's heavy equipment. It's not easy. This stuff's hard. It's hard work, and you can get hurt. I know. I fell off the equipment, you know, not on a, of a ladder. I fell off the tracks. Uh, I mean, there's other things I've done, too, which I will come. I will tell you in another, uh, another segment. But, um, yeah, so this is my second video uh, of this. Uh, please like and subscribe to the Everything's Broke Garage. That's my shop. That's my group name. And, uh, oh, God, that's all that. Dead mouse. I gotta find it. Yikes. Um, yeah. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, like I said, I've got pictures of that machine. I've got pictures of that machine on the job. I've got it disassembled and assembled. You'll see that thing's like unbelievable. That boom. So high up. It's just incredible. Um, okay. Well, thanks for watching and see you next time.